welcome to this unboxing of the Epiphone Les Paul Studio. This is a fresh in and it is the brand new model with the Kalamazoo headstock and CTS pots, Epiphone Pro Buckers and Grover tuners. And it seems like it's going to be an absolutely superb guitar. Uh, it's the Smokehouse Burst one. So we will get straight into this. So it comes in this rather nice box. This one's already been opened, I think, by the, um, the guitar store that I went to. So have a look at this. And it is um, rather a special beast. I played this right next to the Gibson. And this is the one I went for because it was just that good. For the money. For the money, you cannot argue. Um, given that it's far, far less, less expensive than the Gibson. And gives you something which is so close to the sound and feel these days they're absolutely knocking it out of the park epiphone um, so you can see it comes with all of this paraphernalia this is mainly stickers so you get epiphone sticker you get lifetime warranty information you get an app piece of paper there there's a few more stickers in here i did kind of wonder whether it might actually come there you go another sticker epiphone there you go another epiphone sticker there Couple more stickers, more stickers, Gibson featuring Gibson strings. No, no, no. I think that must have been tied onto it. So it comes with a whole load of that sort of paraphernalia. But yeah, there's no um, sort of poker chip or anything in there. Um, unlike a normal, say, standard or something like that. Comes in this nice little sheath um, to keep it all. Oh, you can hear it already going there. And it's quite nicely boxed, actually. If you look at the, this box, you can see it's quite nicely held in the backside there. It's got this mid middle fixing which is quite good. And it's got one at the end here as well. This is often where um, guitars suffer the most. I had a PRS I got delivered not that long ago. And although it was given to me in, and it was sent to me in the, the bag, the gig bag, um, there's a little bit of play at the end and it smacked the end and I, it cracked the headstock before I even opened it. It's got a giant chip out of the headstock. That's not cool. Uh, so I opened it and was rather horrified. So there's a lot less chance with the way they pack these for that to happen on an Epiphone. So that's rather good. So you can see, here we go, unveiling the headstock, unveiling the fretboard, all that good stuff. And you can see what you get. You pull all this back. It is a rather incredibly nice looking guitar. Um, very, very pretty indeed. And um, hopefully you can see that smokehouse burst covering there. Still got the plastic on the pickups there, as you can see. And um, yeah, the fretboard, the wood on there looks really nice. So I'm just sort of giving my first impressions of this. I'm gonna do a full deep dive review on this guitar, of course I will. Um, so I'm gonna go into the back of the guitar, I'm gonna go into everything to do with this guitar, um, including the neck profile, weight, all that good stuff. I can already feel that it's a lot, it feels a lot lighter than my Slashless Paul, which was not tipping the scales at about four kilograms. I've got an Epiphone Traditional Pro as well. That's tipping the scales at nearly four and a half kilograms. So, I mean, that was mental. Um, but this actually feels, and look at that beautiful headstock. I love that new design. That's so much closer to what the Gibson looks like. Um, and you can see, hopefully see the fretboard in there. There you go. So you can see, actually, that's got beautiful figuring on it. That fretboard looks really, really nice. It's just, um, it's lovely work. Um, the quality control and just the, the, the care that they're putting into the guitars these days, Epiphone, it really feels almost second to none. As I say, the PRS is fantastic. I think that's probably really top in terms of overall QC, as long as you don't get a dinged one, of course. Um, but this is really, it's getting there. It's, they're getting closer and closer. They're making great efforts, great strides, I feel, Epiphone. But it really looks absolutely sweet. Really, really looks good. Um, it's so much closer to a Gibson. It, you know, it makes you feel like, well, do I really need to spend that kind of money on a Gibson? I mean, in the UK, the Gibson costs on average about 1,500 uh, pounds. So it's about, I think, about the same equivalent in US dollars and euros depending on where you are, whereas this is much closer to the 500 mark, which, you know, for what you get is really quite impressive. And you also got on here, you've got the, um, the split coils on both of the humbuckers. And I already know, I mean, I, I tried this through um, a Boss Katana Mark II, I think it's the 100 watt version in the shop, which is what led me to this. 
and it just sounds absolutely i already know it sounds amazing i already know it sounds amazing i already know it feels amazing and um yeah so i'm very excited to cover this one and yeah there'll be much more coverage of this guitar you can see actually they've got the metal covering for the jack plate there as well that's that's nice so that's just like a, a more sort of a, of a high-end thing as well. I'm hoping that what I'm going to see on the bridge are the clips, because that's something that they do add as well on a lot of the, the more sort of upper-end, high-end Epiphones. From what I can see, from what I've seen of the specs so far, they have really gone to town on the specs of these. I'm not quite sure how they can afford it. Obviously, it is made in China, so obviously it is costing them less to produce. Having said that, and uh, watching the factory tour of the Chinese factory not that long ago, it really is. They, they put a lot of work into the guitars and they've got really efficient processes there. If anything, they should really do an update video because I think that one's at this point, while I'm filming this, is about seven years old. So it would definitely benefit them, I feel, to do a full sort of new video tour because they've. I really feel like they've up the, up the standards. Um, I also own a South Korean Epiphone Les Paul Studio, a black one from uh, 1998. That's a superb guitar. That's in black. I've got a review of that on the channel as well if you want to check that out. And that's a great guitar. Really, really nice. But I really feel the, the quality of this so far from what I've seen, especially, you know, the CTS pots, Grover tuners, all that stuff, the split coils, it really is really impressive. And if you look at that finish, it is now so close to what the Gibson looks like. Obviously, the Gibson is it has the edge in terms of the finish, I think. But it really, again, it really depends on which Gibson you end up with. It depends on which guitar you exactly select. You go into Sweetwater, for example, you can see exactly what kind of figuring you get. I think I've been incredibly lucky with the figuring on this one. It really looks gorgeous. So um, yeah, I really can't complain. I'm very excited to cover this in more detail. And you'll be seeing hopefully a lot more of this guitar on the channel, I feel, as I get more and more into it with this one. Obviously, I think this the fretboard on this is Indian Laurel, but you can't really tell it very far apart from Rosewood, I feel. It's got the perloid, tra uh, perloid trapezoid inlays as well, looks good. As far as I can feel, on initial feel, the, um, the fret ends actually feel very smooth as well. No issues there whatsoever. Um, standard, uh, standard strap locks there, uh, so they're not. They're not this. It doesn't come with like a with a with a locking mechanism or anything. It's just this just standard strap buttons, I should say. Um, whereas I think some of the higher end models do. Or certainly, my slash came with strap locks. This one is just very sort of basic, very normal. It's, but again, I'm sure they will do the job. I normally, I think like a lot of people, and probably you will as well, if you do get one of these, you might want to put your own strap locks on it anyway. So, um, so yeah, it's not really a big deal. Anyway, it feels lovely. It's very nice and smooth. Uh, I find it very agreeable so far. Looks like a real beauty, and there'll be a lot more coming on the channel about this guitar for sure in the near future. So please watch out for that. In the meantime, please do check out my other reviews. I've got PRS on here. I've got a few different Epiphones, various guitars, Ibanez, you name it, and um, it keeps growing. So um, yeah, please do check them all out. And uh, yeah, keep joining me on this guitar journey and uh, have lots of fun. So an interesting discovery while doing the unboxing of this guitar is that although the specs are listed as Grover tuners on the Epiphone website as at the date of this recording, um, these are actually Wilkinson tuners. Now, they are apparently just as good as Grover tuners. My experience with them so far is that they are actually of excellent quality. Um, and it seems that um, Epiphone are in the process of switching over to Wilkinson rather than Grover because of some supply chain issues. Um, so there you are, an interesting, interesting one for you there. And just something to note, you might get one that's got Grover tuners or you might get one that's got Wilkinson. Okay, cheers.